said that. Yes, you should. You're up. <laughs> Good evening. It's Street Talk. I'm sorry, folks. I wasn't paying attention, right? <laughs> it's Mary Jane's fault. She caught me off guard. Okay, as I call Mary Jane God, the voice of God. I thank you for letting us in your house uh, tonight. Uh, uh, obviously, I, I got a great guest. I'm, I, I love this guest that I got on tonight. Uh, when he comes by and everything else like that, he's an author. He's uh, serious. And, 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 and of course, sitting across from me is uh, my co-host, Dominic Cotton, okay, who just bought a brand new boat. And, is, uh, and he's not even a one percenter. And he's got an anchor around his neck now. But no, I, got, uh, I, got, I should have a fun night because I got the famous, or the infamous, <laughs> yeah. right? Infamous. When you need an attorney, you, if you ever seen the movie Call Saul, I got Saul. Did you ever see Call Saul? You ought to watch that show. Okay, well, I got Saul on the show now. No, no, uh -oh. no, no I'm bad. Good to see you. I, 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 I love no, no, I'm, no, I'm here. No, I'm, no, I'm is, uh, uh, obviously uh, a well-known, you're extremely well-known uh, attorney. Uh, you may call yourself infamous, but we know that you've, uh, you're, you're uh, unbelievable. You're, you're, a, you're my kind of attorney. I appreciate that. You I are just like seriously to go to. Co so, you remember the movie The Paper Chase? Well, so, you know, by Harvard Law School, right? You know, oh, and yeah, based yeah, on yeah, Alan, yeah. Or, uh, what's his name, Scott Turow's book. And so, some professor stands up and he says to the students, if you ever fall asleep in trial, just stand up and object. That'll get you to reorient. Well, I don't need to fall asleep to object. I can walk in and start objecting right away, you know? <laughs> oh. Yeah, yeah and, and I, I do want to plug you, you, you. Well, it's not a new book. The book has been out for a Yeah, about a, a year and a half, maybe it's two about years. About a year and a year, yeah. year and a half, your, your, your book has been out. Uh, and. Uh, and, yeah, the publisher still, called the other day, says, when are you going to do another one? I said, I don't know. You're not selling enough of the ones I've already done. He says, don't worry about selling them. Just keep writing just them. Just keep writing them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, there, a lot of people don't realize that it, we, when you do a book, because we publish mm -hmm. it, it's, uh, mm -hmm. you, you know, it's part of my ministry uh, for guys that are in prison. I deal with prison people who are there to can't afford it, but are talented enough to do a quality book, mm -hmm. Little Red Cell. Uh, and, and and it's not self-publishing; it's mm. real, real publishing. The, the average person in the book business only sells about 150 books. Yeah, no. Wait, if you sell 5,000, yeah, it's a big deal. 5,000 yeah. is a big deal, and usually it's to their family, friends, and everything else. Oh, but people don't realize that. Uh, and then when they the other ones that are really slick, they they're like these politicians, and they go out and they buy all these books and put themselves on the best That's seller. Cool. They buy their own books. Hmm. It's a racket. Hmm. Uh, okay, it, it really. Well, is. I started to buy my own books, and then I thought, you know, the guy, the, the guy who wrote is probably too cheap to autograph them, so I didn't <laughs> I, 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 I put a remainder them. You know. Well, you know what? Uh, you do a blog. Your blog is uh, uh, you, you have your own blog. Yeah, yeah. So a lot, and you got a lot, and you're on Facebook, and man, you get tore up. They light you on fire sometimes, and I love your stuff because it's so controversial. So here's the rule. I mean, I, you know, I, li I like to be controversial, or at least I try, and I call it as I see it. And so every now and then these people get on Facebook and they'll just start, you know, you ignorant, dumb MF, and they may even use yeah, the, yeah, yeah. the complete expression, you know, your mother was, must have been a horrible human being, they said. And I look at it, and I'll give them two or three strikes, but after the fourth, if they're still at it, they're see on the it, highway. See it, yeah, see it, yeah. see it later. So I checked my list of people blocked there are about a hundred of them, so I think I'm going to grant them immunity pretty soon and write a welcome back um, sphincter, yeah. sphincter. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, that's cool, yeah. that's cool. Well, if you don't want to listen to somebody's, another person's view, you shouldn't, I, I, I mean, I, that's what I use yeah. Facebook for. Obviously, I got tons of family, but I, I, I use Facebook to hear other people's views and stuff mm -hmm. like that. I get the same as you do, yep. uh, okay, and stuff like that. But. You, you know, I mean, if you really want to be well informed, where else is somebody going to get, unless you're going to school, yeah. a, a law school, and you're paying the bucks to sit in a class, and you are paying bucks hmm. to get somebody like you, yeah. okay, to, to be able to hear what you have to well, say nice. and stuff no. like that. Well, you know, the, that's the, educational. Once a week, the journal. Um, courier papers in Connecticut publish a column of mine, and then I reprint them on Facebook. And, and the goal is to try to 
pick an issue that's in the news and explain some of the legal mumbo jumbo that surrounds yeah. it so that people get a little bit of a sense of the fact that the law is a conceptually rich environment. You know, many people think that there are right answers to the questions that the law presents. There aren't. It's always a jump ball. It's always surrounded by hazy doctrines. There's not some algebraic equation that gives you the right answer. There are just more or less creative um, um, lawyers fighting for their clients. Five, five, fighting for and that's all it is. And that's that's really all it is. is. Yeah, a lot, there's and, no and, more to it than and that. And if you read it, it's storytelling. Yep, absolutely. Uh, okay, it's really uh, it's history and everything yep. else like that. You, you, you know, of course, I jumped on your Second Amendment stuff. You know, mm. I mean, because it's key to a lot of stuff. Mm. It's big in the news. Everybody's talking about guns and everything else like that. And somebody said to me a couple of weeks ago, I was talking about the Second Amendment, and he got in a big eye. I got no, well, it wasn't too big an argument. It was an argument enough to say. Yeah, the Second Amendment is only because we had militia and that was it. And I said, no. Mm -hmm. That is not what the Supreme Court has said because I said they ruled that the Second, and I, I kept my notes because I write, it's a right to have it in my own home for self-defense. Mm -hmm. I said the last uh, case that went to the Supreme Court mm -hmm. when they ruled, they said not only was it about militia, Okay, the right for, but it was a personal right mm -hmm. of every American citizen to have a gun. And he said, no, that's not, that. you have right of He said, no, I didn't. I said, the guy who headed that decision had passed away, Mr. Scalia. I said, and you go, you can go look it up. He said, how do you know? Do you read that stuff? I said. As a matter of fact, you do. As yeah. a matter of yeah. fact, yeah, yeah, because I was in the business where if you didn't know the law, you had to be a stupid idiot because it was going to come down on you, <laughs> and you were going to pay. Well, you know, you got it right. That's what the, and that's what the Supreme Court case has said. It took two hundred plus years for them to get around to ruling on it, but it is an individual right. Now, the the amendment is poorly written, and it's. It, it supports a number of interpretations, yeah, right, but, exactly um, right. but the Supreme Court has mm -hmm. said it's an individual right. Now, you know, from my perspective, okay, but do we really need to have more guns than people, you know, as there are on the streets in the United States? And then you get into the difficult issues about assault weapons and so forth, you know. Right. Um, um, I had a piece that was in the Register and the Torrington paper and a couple other papers around the state today about the, um, the decision in Bridgeport permitting the, the, the lawsuit against the gun manufacturers to go forward from the go Newtown forward, survivors. Right, right. And that's a very unusual decision. I, I think the judge got it wrong, frankly. Um, you know, the, we can have reasonable time, place, and manner restrictions on speech, and I think we can on certain types of weapons. So Congress passed a law to protect manufacturers and sellers of guns right, that were right, lawful, that, uh, but it has an exception, and it says if you neglig negligently yeah, entrust trust, right. um, your, your weapon to somebody, you can be liable. So the court held in this case that the, the gun, the, 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 the assault weapon, I guess, um, was negligently entrusted to Adam Lanza's mother, who then gave it to her son, right. who then killed all those people. And that sort of makes a mockery of the negligent entrustment uh, doctrine because if the law says a seller can sell something with it with, with, with him, without consequence, well, without consequence, um, it does. You know, you, I think you have to show more than he sold an inherently dangerous instrument if, and it fell into the wrong hands. Yeah, right, right. So I think that case will be reversed on appeal. I agree. I yeah. was reading. I, I was no, reading. That's, that's supposed to be in, in, in state court. I guess there was a big deal yeah. between that's going to be reversed, being in I state courts for versus yeah. being in federal yep. court. So yeah. in a, this was what's called a diversity of citizenship action. So um, um, the, the United States court system is what's called concurrent jurisdiction. In other words, every time you breathe, two governments are looking over your shoulder, state, right. and, federal. state and federal. And so if uh, citizens of one state bring an action against citizens of another state, um, in the citizens bringing the suits state. In other words, you're from Toledo, or Ohio, and I sue mm -hmm. you in a Connecticut court. You can remove the action to federal court. Um, now, in this case, the gun manufacturers are not located in Connecticut. The Koskoff firm out of Bridgeport brought it in Bridgeport in the shadow yep. of New Newtown. So you can hear Remington thinking, we're not going to get a fair trial. This, this firm owns that town, and everybody's still angry here. So they removed it to the Hartford Federal Court, and the judge right. returned it back, back to, to the, yeah. yeah right. And so that's an appealable issue. you know. But I, I don't think this decision can stand. I think the judge made a politically popular decision. She set a trial date, I think, for some time in 2019. Um, beforehand, there'll probably be a summary judgment motion, and up it'll go. You and I are right on the side. 
I should have been a lawyer. You should have been, absolutely. <laughs> There's still time. <laughs> I'm too old. 73, I'm too old. Nah. Uh, uh, it, it's, uh, yeah, I, re I read the thing the same, the yeah. same way. Yeah. And I read Scalia's decision in Heller mm -hmm. and, 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 and what he said and how I interpreted all the different things. I, I, even it says, well, you can have gun restriction. Uh, okay, the states can have like the uh, weapons, like a machine gun and stuff like that, and everything else like that. The, basically, the way I read what was said is, basically, you, you and me and everybody else has a right to have their gun in their home for self-defense. Every American citizen. And then when I was reading the reading the other part, it basically says, you, 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 basically what you just said. Okay. You, you can't hold the manufacturer liable, basically what Bernie Sanders said also, by the way, uh, okay, they sell you a gun in good faith. They don't know, they, they don't know it's going to fall into somebody uh, yeah. hands that are, okay, now if they are aware, that, that becomes uh, That's a That's a different issue. But then That's what's a different the, yeah, what's issue, the proof? Right. But I mean, look, consider the Newtown shooting. Right. Adam Lanza's mother buys an AK-47 and either gives her an, uh, an assault weapon. Either it wasn't an AK-47. She either gives it to her son or right. lets him use it. I mean, what in the world's going on in that household? And how's the gun manufacturer supposed to know? Stuff Some right. middle-aged yeah. woman comes in. Oh, excuse me, ma'am. What do you plan to do with that assault woman? Um, do you have a disturbed son living at home, and do you want to let him use it? I mean, at, some, at what point did it, it, it makes a mockery of the law? It, it does. Uh, exactly. It really, it really does. And it really does make a. You know, you can't know those things. No. Well, I, I'm thinking that uh, some of the, some of the things that they're putting in, like as far as mental health restrictions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How are, how are you going to regulate that? I mean, there's whole issues that go along with, you know, uh, health care information. Yep, yep, no, I hear you. Um, how, how do you, how do you sit, set up a, a, a system that doesn't bias itself to be able to say that you, you, you've been in some mental facility? How do they? How do they even track that? How do they? Well, I, I think come what I come, I come out, I come out of Walpole, okay? I went in 68, I went in 69, I come out in 70, 71. A short termer, huh? Uh, yeah, yeah, I only, uh, if, that was my first one. Yeah, I, did, okay. before I did a total of seven. So I go out to Arizona, right? Now, I'm convicted on gun charges in Massachusetts. I'm robberies, blah, blah, blah. Uh, okay, a lot of gun charges in Massachusetts. I go out to Arizona, okay, I'm off parole, uh, I, I got another thing, right? In Arizona, I strap on a gun. I go out and get my license, and I hunt and trap 22 years in Arizona. They don't enforce the federal gun law. Mm -hmm. They don't care. They don't care about you carrying a gun. They don't care about your conviction. What Arizona says, while you are, uh, once you, if you're convicted of a crime, while you're on probation or parole, you can't have a gun. Once you're out probation or parole, Go get now, your candidly, it makes sense. You've paid your debt to society. Right, I mean, how long right. you got to pay? You know. Well, the first time I got stopped, I'm out hunting and trapping. Mm. I get stopped. I get stopped by the state police. Probably I, I must have been speeding or something. Guy comes up. I got a gun rack. The guns. I got. You know, I'm, I look like you know wild. The Bill. Terminator. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, I'm out trapping. Right. He, pu he pulls the truck over and stuff like that. To license registration check and stuff. And, and I'm in, right? Oh, he comes back. Hey, Russ, oh, you did a little time, huh? They, they know everything. I, he, he said, yeah. He said, you want parole or probation? I said, no. He said, uh, Massachusetts, too, I see. I said, yep. He said, you're staying straight? I said, yep. He said, okay. He said, just a warning, be careful. I must have been speeding or something. I forget, give me my license back, right? That's a nice, I had a 30-30. He said, that's a beautiful uh, 30 30 there. Uh, he said, what, what, what are you doing? I told him I was hunting for up and stuff. He said, oh, good. He said, okay, take it easy, goodbye. Yeah, that was then. Now you'd be doing 10 years in some federal facility and they'd be collecting grant money and he'd own they, your guns. No, no, they don't. They don't are you sure about it? Absolutely. Even today? Even today, I'm right now, today. I'm stunned by that. Oh, yeah. No, See, the, were, they, were they federal Arizona, charges in Massachusetts or were they state, state charge charges? State charges. State, well, state. maybe that was, that was the difference. No, they do not enforce Arizona, Nevada, California. Those states will not 
enforce the federal really? regulation. They don't do, do it. I, I mean, do I'm it. surprised that the feds have not found some grant hook to put into people well, saying, if you want our said, grant money, yeah. report your... You would you think know, they yeah, would do yeah. that, but no. no hmm. they don't. Interesting. It's Interesting. And of course, it's an open gun area, yeah. obviously, yeah. you wear your gun open, and if you, you know, that's what people do out there. It's amazing. Hmm. You know, my partner went, no, oh, they, I said, I'm telling you. I said, believe me, that's exactly what they do. And in the court, that's how they state it. While on probation or parole, you can't have a gun. Hmm. But outside of that, guess what? See you later. Well, there it's you go. It's amazing. There you go. Yep. And that's why it's what's so crazy about this stuff all across the country. I mean, there's a big difference. I can understand Boston, New York, right here. Who, who needs a gun in the city? Mm. You got the cop right here. But if you're out in Arizona or Nevada or anything else like that, you're two hours away from any police or anything else like that, number one, if you have trouble. But guess what? You got rattlesnakes out there. Yeah, okay, there are people who is a whole gun culture around what they, you know, they got cowboys. It's the, it's the real thing. You can watch stupid shows and, and, and see the use of their, their weapon. You don't need, what you don't need, is an AK-47. Who the hell? You don't go deer hunting with an AK-47. No, I that's mean, for sure. Have you ever yeah. shot one of those? No, oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, there's yeah. a great gun. I mean, it you must have to have training with it to, to hit something. I have a friend of mine had had one at some point in Vermont, and we were up there shooting, and I probably hit a tree, but it wasn't anywhere near the one I was aiming at. Fortunately, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it was tough work. It was, it was, it was tough work. Oh, it was God, tough yeah. work. Yeah, well, I'm a woman. Uh, um, my father was a weapons uh, mm -hmm. uh, expert in mm -hmm. the Marine Corps. Oh, wow. And uh, my, my, my uncles, and I, I guess I was around guns since I was, you know, since I can remember. And uh, I'm pretty... Pretty good with them, I'm huh? pretty sophisticated. Well, Connecticut is very uptight about them. Yeah. I mean, every time I get a young man, not many women, but with a gun charge, I'm like, this is Connecticut. You know, you might have run for mayor of some town in Colorado with that gun, but here they're going to put you away totally if they can. Totally different. It's a, totally, it's a, it totally, really is totally very, very different. uptight. Very I put uptight. all my guns away. I have to say to the audience and everything else, my guns have been put away. How many guns? Uh, this is confession away? now. I want to know truthfully. Let me tell you, when I went, I probably put uh, 15 to 16. Now, when you say put away, are they stored no, for, I, against I the apocalypse? No, or, in you know? Michigan, I turned them over to the police. My daughter, my daughter Angie, before she went in the Coast Guard, said, Dad, you don't need these guns anymore. And you just said, okay? And I basically, because of her, said... And, 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 you wonder and you're how, teasing you him about a she, boat? You, know, you wonder I mean, how she got away with the dumpster you know, in the driveway with all absolutely. of this stuff. Absolutely, that's right. I, 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 mean, I mean, I had a sniper rifle that was probably worth... 12, 14, and the reason 000. you had the sniper rifle, you know, just in case there was an errant chipmunk yeah, somewhere well, that needed to be taken well, care well, of? You, you, you know, who knew? <laughs> when they saw those guns, but there was, you know, the no questions asked, no, mm -hmm. you know, it was a program, right? But I, I, turned, I turned all my weapons in, and uh, she, uh, she said, you don't need those things anymore, and everything else. And I always had a weapon. Mm. Since I can remember close where I could get it, and mm. I trained them all in and, and wow. everything because wow. of the baby. Wow! And then I took the money. I I got about uh, let me know, out of those guns. I got about uh, two thousand dollars on about twenty thousand dollars worth of guns. Okay, and then I that was part of her computer for the uh, right. that, works. that I that that the uh, that I had to buy for her going into the Coast Guard uh, Academy, my uh, mm. contribution to her education program. Mm. <laughs> but, but uh, yeah, I, I, well, I, there's a different, we're in a different culture here. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I, 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 you know, we're not Montana. We're yeah, absolutely. Not, uh, well, I remember, do you recall not long ago, about two years ago, the former president, maybe three now, of the New Haven Bar Association was in a public theater openly carrying his weapon and the police and, and people became alarmed and called the police and the police came in um, and he was yapping it up on his phone giggling thinking it's funny now you know he had the right openly to carry that I guess I didn't realize that Connecticut was an open carry state in that way at the time 
Um, but when the officers asked him to cooperate, he should, in my view, he should have treated it as something more than a joke. Uh, I mean, yeah. this is Connecticut. You don't sit in the movie theater with your gun Georgia in your gun lap, in you know, lap. and waiting right. for something to happen. And so he was arrested. The charges were dismissed, and I believe he's now sued the city. And, you know, if the city pays him a dime without a fight, in my view, that'd be a mistake. That's just encouraging that sort of false bravado. But. You know, who knows what the city will do. Yeah, it, it's exactly where you, where you live. I saw something on Facebook, and they showed the guy in an open carry. And that's what I was thinking. There's a difference in open carry in Connecticut than there was in Arizona. Mm -hmm. they, they were everybody, well, well uh, not everybody, but a large majority of the population open carry. Mm -hmm. So you see them all, so you don't think nothing of it uh, while I was in Arizona. But here... You, it just stands it's, out. It's just stands it just stands out. Well, that's I, not I, a I know common there, there factor. Were, there were big issues around, uh, and I actually lived out in Sandy Hook, mm. obviously, oh, wow. prior to like all, all of this stuff happening. Wow. But the Dunkin' Donuts in the middle of the town. People were making a whole big deal of like being able to go in and open carry into the Dunkin' Donuts. Mm. I'm like, what do you need to prove? Yeah, exactly right. You know? Get I mean, a dog. I, I, <laughs> what, 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 what yeah, do you really need to prove well, with that? Yeah. I don't you know? get it. I don't get it. Don't have you guys been following it all, the whole Sandy Hook denier thing? You know, I've, some people have gotten my email on oh, that, the, the, that it's a the, hoax. The strange guy that, yeah, that, that, yeah. That's, that's stalking people yeah. on, off of that? Well, we off, yeah, that's part of it. That's yeah. sort of like the, you know, one piece of it. I'm, but I've been so, my, my uh, hi, Darren, I know you're watching the show. I was just going to say, Darren, Bobby, and everything else, uh, Darren, just got home from the hospital. Oh my! Two month, two month bout. You met now. Oh, yeah. I okay. Believe. Yep. Yep. Uh, okay. Yep. Yep. I know uh, who you're talking 12, about. Twelve. Twelve. Hey, Darren. Uh, twelve days in a coma. Welcome home in a coma. Okay. Was and you woke up to see Russ. And then oh you woke man, up to what's see better, the coma or Father <laughs> Russ? <laughs> and thank God he's been. You know, I mean, I, I, we thought we were going to lose him and everything, and he's on the recovery. He's on the recovery, and and stuff like that. So, I lost about almost two months of time because of, you know, our care facility and what we do and stuff like that. So, so I miss this. Uh, well, I mean, basically, it's a group of people who believe that Sandy Hook, that there, Sandy Hook, rather, there, there were no murders at Sandy Hook. It's an elaborate law enforcement hoax. And it's not simply an idle fantasy for these folks. They've, they've, they've got They're photographs. Serious? Oh, yeah, I got an email today from somebody saying, you know, you need to consider these three photographs and and you know th th this never happened and presumably it's part of a vast governmental conspiracy to um, uh, provoke handgun restrictions so that we can all be made sheep and take be taken over by somebody and you know it's a, sort of the same sort of uh, thing about the 9-11 deniers you know um, who oh think yeah 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 yeah, yeah exactly I, 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 I don't know where these people come from I really don't these people scare me well, well I, I, think, I, I think there's a certain segment of the population that's going to be conspiracy any which way. I guess. It's just like, moon. you know, you can pick out, okay, there's a certain percentage of the population that's going to have some level of mental health disorder. There's a certain segment of the population. Yeah, but these, are, these aren't people who are howling at the moon in any obvious way. I mean, they're otherwise capable and competent people who can string sentences together and mobilize support and talk to one another and complete sentences. I mean, but they're just bat feces crazy, you know, and I mean, I, I, one of them tried to, well, I guess I shouldn't say, hypothetically speaking, I may or may not have been approached to represent one of them, and, and that conversation lasted about nine seconds. I, that phone flew out of my hand so hard, I think it's still echoing, you know, so. Again, I'm sorry. I I mean, like I said, I'm very connected to this community. Uh, one, one of my best friends right. um, uh, deals in trauma. She was actually uh, right. one of the people that has been treating uh, the police officers, the officers that, were, uh, right. that, that went in uh, to to that. And so, you know, and yeah, she no, grew up in that whole community. I lived in that community. Yeah, well, a friend of mine's son, you know, you know? Had, a, had a relative who was uh, shot there, you know. So, I mean, I, I mean, an adult. And so, I mean, you know, it didn't seem like a real fiction to him. No. Uh, it's just a crazy, you know, one of my, my favorite movie is Wizard of Oz, and I love the scene where Dorothy throws water on the Wicked Witch of the West and she's dissolving, and one of the things she says is she dissolves, what a world, what a world. <laughs> and there's not a day that goes by <laughs> that I don't repeat that line yeah, in my yeah, mind. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, right. what a world. What a you world, just can't make this stuff up. <laughs> no, you can't. I, I, it's, it, it, yeah, exactly. You can't make it up. Uh, and, and, but I just... 
I, I mean, I just wonder where did these people come from? Well, you get high. Uh, look at our politics. Yeah, Highly okay. educated yeah. people. They were all, they're batshit. <laughs> right? They are. Well, they I, are nutbags. You've got to be kidding me. I think we have a broader cr crisis of legitimacy in the United States that people f have frustrations, that they have <coughs> interests that government and society is a whole don't recognize. And there's a huge disconnect. And I think that the, the, the Trump campaign is one expression of that anger. Sanders is another expression of it. And people are just angry. They feel that the world they live in doesn't work and the institutions that govern them don't, are, aren't honest and the people who manipulate them aren't. And so I think this is a wide open political year where anything is possible. Well, I think historically that's what we're seeing. We're, yeah. we're, 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 we're in the, number one, we're in the midst of a, uh, a revolutionary change mm -hmm. in industry and stuff like that. Many, many people are being left behind. It, there's factually, we have two Americas. Now, now, uh, obviously, I'm too old, but my kids aren't going to suffer from what's going on. Angie's not going to suffer from what's mm -hmm. going on. I, they're military, stuff like that, highly educated and stuff like that. But then you have a whole process of society and people that I work with on a daily basis, they're, they're lost. Mm -hmm. They're no hope, no chance of doing anything. Uh, uh, limp, limp, well, a society, is, you, you a house know. divided against itself can't stand at some yeah. point. What, what do you do? You know, how do, how do you take care of the people that can't take care of themselves? That's really what it gets down mm -hmm. to. People get mad. Yeah. I, 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 I have a friend of mine in California, very, very, very successful, wonderful guy. Okay, okay but he's a businessman. He thinks, you know. Uh, you know, everything I, everything I work for belongs to me, I'm wealthy, whatever I earn, I shouldn't have to pay taxes, nobody should be putting a gun to my head that I got to take care of people that can't take care of themselves. And then I say, well, you know what, these people can't take care of themselves. Well, every, he thinks everybody can take care of themselves, and they can't. A and, uh, uh, you know, they, they can't make it. They, they're lucky they get minimum wage. You know, I, I, I mean, they don't have any skills to earn more than... No, I hear you. I hear you. you know? You know I'm, I, I, I've taken a remarkable turn in the last year where I'm just suddenly very interested in the Catholic Church and its social teachings um, because, I mean, we, we, we're just lost as a culture. And at, at least the church offers some moral beacon and some sense of responsibility for our fellow man and has a coherent body of teaching. Now, you know, clearly it's feet of clay. You can talk about the priests, you can talk about the Spanish, you know, you can talk about the Inquisition. Oh, yeah, yeah, you can yeah, talk yeah. about all that stuff until you're blue in the face. Yeah. But a godless society hadn't done much better. And so I'm, you know, I'm looking to the church for leadership at this point um, on social issues because I think the economy is dead and the world is fractured. I think there's a huge demographic change coming. You know, the Caucasian Americans will become a, a minority in this right, country in 2014. 2040. 2040, and if you look at even it, 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 in, in, in uh, the Atticus Finch story, uh, To Kill a Mockingbird, you know, one of the things um, Scout said to, to Jem, uh, or, 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 or excuse me, Atticus said to Scout at some point was, um, you know, there's a reckoning to come, and I hope it doesn't happen in your children's lifetime. I look at the new book by Tanisha, ta Hasi Coates, um, uh -huh. on, yeah, um, between, you know, between the, the world, world and me, and I, the yeah, world which and I find I virtually, it. well, you love it. I can't I read it. it. I find it unreadable. It's almost like idolatry. I mean, it's like the black body is now something to be worshipped. Certainly, we have had historical problems between the races, but it's not anybody's turn to be worshipped. Worship is what we do of a god not of one another. And I think that social divisions are going to take place in this country, and it's a scary, scary day of reckoning and future coming. I, I think, I, I, I believe you're right. I, I, okay, my perspective, probably because of who I associated, who I grew up with, what I read, like the individual, mm -hmm. what, what, what I've learned of the historic, I can understand where he is. Well, I, oh, I can too. I, yeah. I, and, and, but I also, when I read your stuff, I also understand that side too, yeah. and, 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 and I think there's some place in the middle. I hope so. Okay, and that 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 has to be true. What I get mad at is when people go after you because you're honest about mm. where, where you deal with that mm. stuff and everything else like that. And I see that. 
I don't cut no crap. I mean, you know, when I sit at the table, when I sit at the table with Bruce Morris, or I sit, I, I, I'm, I'm a, I, my, my partner's a brother, mm -hmm. and I talk table talk like they talk, mm -hmm. table talk. And, and he's been on my show, and he said, nobody else does that. And I said, well, nobody, because nobody knows blacks. Mm -hmm. I said, and they're afraid. I said, I come from an interracial family. Mm -hmm. So we talk what we say to each other, see you later. I'm not going to say on TV. Why but, not? Uh, well, because it's kind of crude. Politically it, insensitive. It's, it's, no, yeah, 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 it is. It, no. is. it is politically insensitive. You know, you know, you know. I say my whatever, and they, you know, you get this roll call. I stepped in that one. Okay, okay. Good evening. You're on Street Talk with Father Russ and his guests. Hey there, Father Russ and his guests. There, this is your favorite Republican calling again. Here we go. You have a favorite Republican? I, yes, I, Father Russell. He's got many of them. I have many. I, you know, I get many of them. Rob Kane and I are friends. You told me Donald Trump was your favorite Republican. I, 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 I just want to make a, a, a real quick comment along the lines of uh, your conversation. Ooh. I don't know if that's... You're too near a TV or something. That's the Republican okay, that's National it. Committee censoring you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Rice Priestess is, you know, he's, he's <laughs> Yeah, that's right. right. Yeah, you're you're going to lose your... Oh, wow. You can't do wow. it. You, it, it. She told me, I got to let you go. Okay. You can you can hear me now? Real quick. The attorney's that wordsmith caused a lot of the problems that we have today. Mea culpa, mea culpa, mea maxima culpa. When all else fails, blame the lawyer. But when you get in trouble, don't call the butcher for help. You know, my, my, my cousin Michael, another attorney like you, uh, when I was dealing with certain things, you know, I was dealing with the sports thing with, with the kids, and I said, you know what? This stuff has costed me a fortune because all my girls were champion, uh, runners, basketball players. So I got them the best training, and they were AAU. And AAU was expensive. Yeah, yeah. Okay, a lot of and it. When you got three of them in it, see you later. You're talking thousands of bucks, right? And I, I, I started crying to Michael, and Michael says to me, he said, either pay AAU. Or pay me later. Yeah. <laughs> As an attorney, he said best things. You know, he said Dear people. He said people hate us just like like they, until they need you. Yeah, no. I, 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 yeah, okay. Yeah, you're you're all this until they need you. Well, I'll tell you, I love my attorneys, and that's no joke. I, I and I had wonderful attorneys, and and boy, if I didn't have them, I you know I'd be still in local. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Or, or out in Arizona, mm. uh, okay? And uh, I mean, you, but you got to know who you have too, mm. uh, 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 okay? I mean, uh, uh, you should know who you I mean, have. I guess you know it's funny. People call and all the time our office, and I'm like, "How'd you find me? Yeah, I saw you online." I said, "That's a terrible way to get a lawyer, you know? Go, for, go talk to some people." Somebody and, who know you. Well, yeah, 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 but I mean, you know that. And, and realistically, not every lawyer is for everybody. I mean, it's like a marriage. People call, and I always tell them, you know, don't if you don't want if you don't like what you see or what you hear, then don't hire me, um, because we're in it for sickness and in health, better or worse. And my life's probably not going to get a whole lot worse. Yours might. So if you don't trust me, go find somebody you trust. Well, and, and that's exactly right. Yeah. I, I mean, you, especially the circumstances. I I was. Oh yeah. You, you know, my life is in your your hands. Yeah. If I'm coming to you. And, and I better trust you because, uh, you know. You know, the number of people who want to argue with their lawyer, though, or, you know, you give them your advice, you tell them, look, this is the law, this is what's going to happen. I've been around the block for more times than you can count, and you really should consider doing X. And they look at you and they say, I understand. Let's go to Y. Y is likely to be a catastrophic consequence for you. Uh, I know you can do it. I don't think I can. I want you to do it. And then you do it and maybe it doesn't work out that well, and then they want to sue you or bring a habeas corpus petition or file a grievance, <coughs> and suddenly it's all your fault. My, my best, and I love them, my best lawyer was William Holmans Jr. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we okay. talked about him before. Oh, here. man, I'm telling you, he sat down with me. Well, I had another lawyer, and I was really jacked up. I mean, I was, the Boston police set me up, stuff like that. I was doing stuff. I was doing the prison program and stuff like that really jacked up. 
and, and I'll get my, that person. Uh, okay. It's probably that Republican and, one. And, and, tell me I'm and, and I'm jacked up, right? So I got this attorney, and I, I said, look, this is what happened. This is the way it happened and everything else. No, we we got to do it. He tried to tell me, and he wanted me to. Become an informant and rat people out? And, yeah. Not Did I guess that, that right? I guess that right. And, and wear and, a and, wire. And, and, and all that kind of, I said, yeah, no, 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 yeah. no. So I go to Bill. Well, How did I know yeah, that? And I, and, and, uh, Actually, Phyllis Ryan and Dr. Ryan get me Bill. I meet with Bill and stuff like that. I said, look, this is what happened. This is exact. I am not going to do this kind of stuff. I am not going to. I said, and I'm not going to do what this uh, other lawyer is, who now is a judge. I said, this is the way it is. He said, is that right? Is that the truth? I said, I'm telling you straight. This is the way it is and everything else like that. And I took a trial on his stuff. It was unbelievable. It was like I wasn't even there. Mm -hmm. It was like I was watching the greatest. Uh, Were you scared? I don't. I don't think I was scared because of the nature of who I was. Right. Right. You know, I don't think I. I wasn't scared. Uh, uh, okay. But the work that he had done, he did private investigation, mm -hmm. and, and and all this kind of other stuff, that. He went, he went far beyond what I thought. Uh, I just, I always wonder how folks withstand the stress of trial when everything is in the hands of strangers and you don't know which way it's going to go. To watch him come into the courtroom was an amazing thing. I'll get this. Hello. We're on street talk with Father Russ and his guest. Hey, Father Russ. This is me again there. You, you called it. Conspiracy huh? theory, buddy. The RNC doesn't want me to talk. Who doesn't want you to talk? The RNC there. No, no, that wasn't the RNC. That was the Central nah, Intelligence nah, Agency. I can see it right there. I'm going to say it real quick before my phone dies. Go ahead, Before quick. the interference interference comes back again. What? Is it lawyers that are the problem? Because everything is wordsmith. I was saying before my phone started messing up, a man's word used to be his bond. Now you got the guy misspoke. Uh, it's the wrong optics. It's not what he said. This is what he meant. And I think that's the mood in America, is who can we trust? Oh, well, if, well I, I, yeah, I, I think you're right. I, 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 don't, I don't know if you can trust anybody anymore. But there's two Americas. I mean, there, there's not one America anymore. There's the America that's doing really, really well. And then there's the America that is no more manufacturing, no more entry jobs, uh, uh, poor education. People go and get an education, and there's no work. Okay, we're in the midst of a transition, okay, from, uh, from, from a society that manufactured stuff and everything else that is now high tech, I said, and, and, and you've got people that are, they, 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 are, they don't have the education to compete, okay? If you've got the education to compete, you're doing okay. If you don't, you're on the other side. Well, uh, I, wanna, I, I understand what you're saying. Uh, Father Russ, but I want to pick on the lawyer. Why, why are you picking on the lawyer? I want to pick on the lawyer see. because part of it is that most of Congress are lawyers and they're career politicians. You know, it's a lawyer slash career politician fraternity who go there forever and have never solved a problem. You and oh, I can point oh, out I the problem, but I, Congress I, takes the tax money and trillions of dollars worth of tax revenue. So what's your solution? Should every third problems? lawyer be sent to Canada or maybe publicly executed? No, like, I don't what? think every lawyer should be publicly executed. I didn't say everyone. I just said every third lawyer, you know, like win all out the bad ones. I'd, well, we, I'd need, a, we need tort reform, you know? If, if, if a guy, you know, we can't be so crazy. No, you know, I, I don't think joke. the RNC kept you off. I think you're an RNC mole. We need to <laughs> silence the lawyers and let corporations do justice no, and purchase no, political campaigns for us. And you know what? I'm Rather than have frivolous. people who understand how the law works in no, Congress, let's have lawsuits. businessmen in there. I, I By golly. I think there's two, two different I mean, versions of lawyers. Feelings, I think I'm there's the, the lawyers no, that I make the rules, and I think there's the lawyers that try to find their way to I got another call from the Thanks for calling. I'm so I mean, yeah, I, you know, I, I think you're talking about you're talking about the lawyers that are in Congress. Good evening. They you're, write the you're, laws. You're on street yeah. talk with Father Rust and his guests. Hello. No, he isn't. Hit oh. the button until it turns red. There you go. One more hey. time. Hey. You're on street talk. I'm sorry, with Father Rust and his guests. 
Hello. All right, can you can you hear me now, Russ? Yeah, I can hear you. All right, this is Dennis. Um, I have one question for your your guest. Uh, what, that I should have been on your show and you forgot that you had Dominic and I scheduled and you you, for, you forgot us. We love you, though, Dennis. <laughs> Boy, and I was going to show up early, too, Dennis. This is a tough, <laughs> tough crowd. Go ahead, I have, Dennis. I have, a, I have a question for your lawyer. Um, if lawyers are supposed to be so transparent, if it, they're supposed to be to where you can understand what they're talking about, why is everything that they write or every document you see that comes from a lawyer so friggin' impossible to understand? Well, you haven't read my stuff, clearly. But if you, it depends on who you're writing for and when. So the law isn't rocket science, but it is a craft, and it has legal doctrines. And so lawyers resort to shorthand in terms of those doctrines. For example, if you sue me for being ugly, um, you'll probably <laughs> lose the suit. If you sue me for being ugly and six feet tall, there's a legal doctrine that might prohibit you from bringing that second suit, the, the, the tallness suit, and that's called raised judicata. So a lawyer might say, Judge, that's raised judicata. And you'll say, why can't you just talk simple? Raised judicata is just a Latin term that means a thing adjudicated, a thing decided. And so the claim is if you're going to bring a lawsuit against me for my characteristics, you have to bring all those claims at the same time. or You, you can't strip them off and bring them piecemeal. So that long explanation that I just gave of the Latin term um, is a better explanation, but for people who know raised judicata, if you just say that, you cut right to the chase. Um, the prior caller, I think, was making a point about lawyers being deceitful and whatnot. And the fact of the matter is we have an adversarial system. So if you retain me to represent your, you, my, my objective is to find out what your interests are and in the context of a courtroom battle or fight or adversarial system, do everything the rules permit me to get you the best possible outcome. We don't have a cooperative or inquisitorial system as exists in, in, in Europe. Europe, right? UK, yeah. Well, right? I tell you, you sure, you sure talk like a lawyer. I'll well, tell you. <laughs> well, that'll uh, cost you about $112 per word. I know word. it. I know it. Well, I better talk uh, like a lawyer. I've been doing for, this for a long time. And that's only a half hour. Uh, no, but what I'm getting at is, like, when I get a document from, say, like, buying a house, I have to get a lawyer in order to understand that document. Most because people Because of do. the legal ease. I mean, you're, you're can't, right. can't it be, can't some of this stuff be written so the common folk can understand it? Well, do you expect the same thing of uh, the warnings of, for about prescription drugs? And do you expect the same thing of your surgeon? Yes, I do. Yes. Well, I, I don't think I you like get it any see. better there. Well, I know I'm not going to get it. I know I'm not going to get any of it. But I'm just curious. I was just always wanted to ask a lawyer why... It has to be written so. Well, you know, and I mean, it's in part because lawyers are afraid of one another. It is a suit-happy world. So if I'm going to write a, a, you a description of something, I want to make sure that I advise you of everything that can go wrong so that, nobody, so that you can't turn around and say, but you, didn't t you told me that A through X could have gone wrong, but you didn't tell me about Y. So if you look like at a standard um, termination agreement when somebody is fired from a job and settles the claim, um, there are more laws written in there than there are letters of the alphabet. And I've sat down with clients who've looked at that and said, what does all this stuff mean? And I said, well, the bottom line is it means you can't sue them for anything you didn't think about or anything you can imagine. And this is a list of everything that lawyer can imagine. So I think that we have, there are too many lawyers that were litigation crazy. We have in the United States what's called the American rule, where the, yeah. you, you, uh, the loser does not pay the costs of the person uh, he's tormented by bringing them to court. I think if we've made more barriers to the use of lawyers, people might find ways to get along. But in a system that encourages lawyers to bring litigation, we're getting exactly the, thing, the result that you, you find so distasteful, over complexity well, I, by people terrified of being sued by one another. I think I think the way things, the way uh, even lawyers talk, the way they write things up and stuff like that. I think that's why the public is is not on board, or maybe that's not the word I want. They're they're well, weary you know, of you guys. I don't think my cousin Vinny, as entertaining as he was on television, would be a very effective courtroom advocate. Yeah, All righty. The other thing is okay. Uh, you think you, about you your doctors. You for what you get in life. <laughs> I was, no. Well, think about doctors, okay? You think about uh, uh, understanding your doctor if your doctor talks to you about uh, your lung problem or something like that. that that's their expertise. Uh, to understand them, they break it down into layman terms. Uh, okay, it's, it's, it's very difficult. Lawyers go to school, they spend, they spend a couple of years learning a language. 
uh, uh, so that they can interpret what the law says. The law is not an easy thing to understand. What Norm may think of a certain law, in his opinion, like we were talking about the Second Amendment, him and I could read the same sentence, and he has an opinion that will differ from mine out of the same words. And then we're breaking down words, uh, uh, okay? Well, I, uh, and that's what I happens, I, you know? You know, you know, Russ, I think a lot of, you know, pe people think that lawyers are in, well, not all people, a lot of people think lawyers are in their own little world, and they create this world uh, so that the public, most public can't understand what the hell they're talking about. You know, about. I mean, that's on you then. If you've got a legal document and a lawyer and you don't understand it, you need to tell them, put it in terms I can understand. That that's his job. That's the job. You know, right. but well, the that, law. That's, I, I'll give you that. That's, that's true. No, but the but, law, you know, the law, we ask impossible things of the law. There are however many, you know, 350 million people in the United States, and we're at one another's throats about everything. Uh, we live in a, in a situation of scarcity where, as Russ was saying earlier, the have-nots are becoming more and more dispossessed, mm -hmm. and the haves are becoming terrified. And what the law does is provide a set of tools for resolving disputes. Um, clearly, lawyers do well resolving those disputes. We're a derivative profession. Um, um, some would call us parasites or sharks, and I can't say that I disagree from time to time. I mean, for me, I'm constantly getting calls from people in need, and the question I have is, what well, can you pay me? You know, and I mean, there, there's a certain soul-destroying quality to that sort of uh, life. Yeah, you know, yeah, exactly um, right. On the exactly. other hand, I've got four gotta, lawyers working for me and well, a bunch of paralegals, and I got to pay them. Like so it's a hustle. It's a, it is. It's it's a hard thing, Dan. Dan, you know, even as Norm was saying, <clears throat> you get a lawyer. And you go into a situation, and if you're in a criminal situation, and you outline what happens and has to happen, and he says to you, hey, look, you, you, there is no way, you, you, you need to think about this. There's no way I can go to court because the fact of the matter, I'm guilty of what I did to begin with, and there's no wiggle room for him to get out of, and maybe he's going there to try and get me a deal to save time. Now, I either got to agree with him, or I got to put him on the spot, spot and say, hey, you, you take this to trial, whether I like, and, and guess what? I, I, I'm going to end up doing life yeah. <laughs> and because he's going to do the best he can. But the other lawyer on the other side is going to say, now, nah, here's the witnesses. You were there. This was your gun. Uh, your DNA's no. here, and you're dead. This Me. is Dennis, right, on the line? Dennis, Dennis yes, you know, you, there's yeah. an interesting um, um, debate going on in the law right now and an emerging practice that I'm not sure what to think about. Um, legal fees are expensive, the economy's tanked, you know, we've never recovered from 2008, so many people are without lawyers, and the courts are choked with pro se litigants, people representing themselves, which is a nightmare for managing the system. Like me. Um, and so the courts are now experimenting with what's called limited practice appearances, meaning um, um, you can give me a part of a larger problem of yours and ask me and retain me just for that. Um, I think that's a horrible idea. Because what you're basically saying is give me a little piece of your life and let me just work on that and ignore the rest of it and leave you on your own for that. Yeah, but um, I would think that's going to end up costing you whatever it would be if you just went in there and did the whole package. Well, maybe, but I think... you're going to end up paying for the whole thing. Or, or what, I, what I think is, you know, and the other problem a lot of lawyers have with clients, I doubt I'd have it with you, is a lot of clients are afraid to be candid with the lawyers. Um, They're you know, not honest, um, yeah. Yeah, right. and so, you know, they, they come in and they lie and they tell they you lie. a story and you go to court and you find out half of what you were told behind closed doors isn't true and now it's your fault. Um, and how'd that, how'd that happen, yeah. you know? How'd I'm that innocent. Right, I didn't do it. Uh, that wasn't me they have on the camera. <laughs> yeah, <that's okay. laughs> uh, see you guys later. Thanks. Be well, see Dennis. you Saturday, Dennis. Uh, you got it. Bye. Okay. He's great. Okay. I can't believe it. Four minutes? You got to be kidding me! Where would the time go? Every time. That's what we, we're going We needed to do a two-hour show. Oh, you so think, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I don't either. know about that. I I, uh, that. I start foaming at the mouth at a certain point, you know. Yeah, but yeah, you might be foaming at the mouth, but you're so informative. If people are listening, uh, okay, they just got uh, they just got. Uh, Six hundred dollars worth of uh, one hour. Well, I know. I, 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 took, I took one of one of my. Courses. I have a master's in healthcare administration. Yeah. One of the classes I took was was actually healthcare law. Yeah, it's in, it's interesting stuff. And it is. And yeah. they they. I mean, we were given like all kinds of different cases. Yeah. Yeah. And um, but it, I mean, it basically broke down to, okay, was there an actual damage that right. you could prove? Right. 
was there uh, a, a, a procedure that uh, the person didn't follow through on mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, that caused the damage? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, I mean, you, you had specific things that you were, you, were, you were taking you, you a look at, to look at in order to be able to bring well, a case from uh, All the law is is a principled way of resolving problems. That's yeah. all yeah. it is. And the yeah. principles are in flux. They're constantly changing. Sometimes they work better than others. And then the range of talent among lawyers is overwhelming. You know, I remember sitting in law school once in the criminal procedure class with about 70 people in there. I thought, man, there are only about three people in here that I'd have to handle a parking ticket for me. <laughs> you know, I don't know how many of them are out there blowing <laughs> know, murder yeah, cases yeah, now. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's true, though. <laughs> I go through the lawyer because I check out where, where were you? What was you standing at yeah. school and everything? Hey, pal, look at this. No, I'm Thanks bless for you. Me. Great, great to Thanks have you and everything else. Uh, next week we have Heather Summers. Heather Fires. Summers, who's running for Senate, Andy Andy's uh, seat. Yep. Of course, we'll have Tim Bowles down the road. Uh, okay, yes, he, he, he that's going to be the today. other side. You booked him today, yep. and the week after. Oh, Jesus, I have you to take a look. Okay. <laughs> One week okay, at a time. One week at a time. Okay, <laughs> yeah, the way we're going. God bless. Look, thank you all for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Thanks for calling in, you guys. Okay, I love you. We'll see you next week. Pray for me. I'll pray for you. And I need a lot of prayers. <laughs>